This is going to be Proverbs chapter 1, verse by verse. And in this study, we're going to look at the subject of the importance of Proverbs. Number 1, to learn from great men. Proverbs 1.1, 1, 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So right away, you see the author of the book, Solomon, the son of David. And he was a great wise man. If you read in 1 Kings 4, 29 through 32, it speaks about this man Solomon and says, And God gave unto Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. So Solomon was the wisest man that's been on the earth. He messed up. He did some bad things. But God gifted him with wisdom. It even says that he wrote 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. So Solomon, the wisest man, if we want to be like Solomon was, then we need to go through these wisdom books that he wrote and try to do everything they say. Learning from these great men like Solomon is how you'll become a better saint for God. Not only learning wise things from him, but also learn from the unwise things that he did. Try not to do those things yourself. You can learn from great men by doing the great things that they did, but also abstaining from the mistakes that they made. Learn facts and wisdom from them. Learn some things not to do by learning from their mistakes. Solomon has a lot of wisdom for you, and he also did a lot of foolish things that you'll see if you read about him in the Bible and those things you need to avoid. What you should do is take all the wisdom from every great Bible believer that you can get your hands on. Find every great Bible believer. Write down their name. Listen to all their sermons or, or read all their books. Every good thing that you can find from them, take it. Every bad thing, throw it in the trash. But every good thing that God has shown them is something that you should store in your mind. And Proverbs is important because you need to learn from great men. Number two, the importance of Proverbs is like, like I said, you need to get wisdom from it. You need to learn from great men. Great men, and you need to get wisdom. Storing wisdom. Proverbs 1 2 to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. If you have wisdom, then you know how to use the facts that God has put in your head. When you search the word wisdom, it's connected with someone being able to use what they know. For example, in Exodus 36 1, and says, Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. So men like Bezalel had God-given wisdom that allowed him to do work and work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. He had the facts and could use the facts and many men will sit around all day getting facts, getting knowledge, getting smarter and smarter. But until they use all those facts, they aren't showing wisdom. Many times a person will, will know more than the preacher, yet all they do is sit back and correct the preacher. This shows that they are smart, but yet they lack wisdom. They aren't doing anything with what God has given them except to cor correct the men who are using what God has given them. Maybe God's given you more than a certain man, but are you using what he's gave you? There is also a difference between worldly wisdom and God's wisdom. 1 Corinthians one twenty. where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The wisdom of this world looks foolish compared to God. 1 Corinthians 2, 5 through 7, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, not in Dr. Phil and all these people, not in these doctors you see on TV that have their own TV show, 
Don't let your don't let your faith stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So you have the wisdom of God, you have the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is nothing compared to the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 3.19 For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So you see, the wisdom of this world says to have abortions because women have rights to choose. But that's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God says that's murder and the abortion doctors are murderers. The wisdom of this world says you only live once so you can do anything that doesn't hurt someone else. But the wisdom of God says you only live once, but you die, and after this, the judgment. It also says don't do everything you want because you reap what you sow and the sins you commit do hurt others whether you know it or not. A wise man knows the difference. A wise man knows that an uneducated hillbilly Bible believer has more wisdom than than Dr. Phil, Oprah Winfrey, Ellen, all these people that people claim to do, that are wise. Now the next thing, why is Proverbs important? Proverbs 1-2, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So to know wisdom and instruction, that's an important reason to read Proverbs Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the Bible is instruction in righteousness because it tells you how to get the righteousness of God when you get saved. It tells you how to live righteous on earth after you get saved. So instruction is something or someone telling you how to do something. That's why it's important to listen to preaching. That's why it's important to read the Proverbs. That's why it's important to listen to people who are older and wiser. You need instruction in righteousness. And next is understanding. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. So a man can have wisdom. He can have knowledge. He can know how to instruct someone. But when, when he doesn't do all the things that he knows to be right and that he knows how to do, then he doesn't have understanding. A man may know what things are a sin and he may know the things that aren't a sin. He may know how to use the facts that God has given to him. He may be able to tell others how to do it, but if he doesn't practice them himself, then he doesn't have understanding. And I'm sure there are men who know how to get off drugs. They know what drugs do to you. They know what to do to get their flesh out of an addiction. They may even tell others how to get out of an addiction. Yet if they don't get off the drugs themselves, then they don't have understanding. A man, underst a man of understanding departs from evil. Job 28, 28 says, And unto man, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to, to, to depart from evil is understanding. So the devil is wise. The Bible says he's wiser than Daniel. He's obviously much smarter than me and you. A much more intelligent being than me and you. Yet he lacks the understanding. He didn't depart from evil. He still doesn't depart from evil. You may be very smart. You may be a great man. But if you're not departing from evil, then you lack understanding. But the next thing, to, re to receive instruction, Proverbs 1.3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. You can read the Proverbs, but if you don't receive the words, then it won't help. You can know the difference between wisdom, judgment, knowledge, and instruction. But if you don't receive the words, then it won't do you any good. When you read the Proverbs, receive the instruction of wisdom. Justice. If something is just, then it gives to the person what's due them. That's what the Bible does. It calls you a sinner, and it's just in doing so. It says you're righteous if you're saved. 
and it's just in doing so because you got the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Judgment. 1 Corinthians 2.15 says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. You need the proper view on judgment. Proverbs will show you how to judge. You can't tell if something is right or if it's wrong if you don't judge it. Reading the Bible will show you how to make the right judgment. If you take God's views and his side in the argument, then you made the right judgment. If you take the world's side, you made the wrong judgment. And many times today you're seeing the Christians take the world's side instead of God's side. They're going on how they feel instead of what the Bible actually says. And that's what the contemporary scene has brought in. I just feel this way. I just, but I feel like that. You know, like the charismatics, how they teach. It's all about what you feel instead of what something actually says. You can't go on what you feel. You have to go on what the words say. So to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. Equity is the impartial distribution of justice. Justice must be served without respect of persons. Proverbs 1.4 to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. So if you give subtlety to the simple, then you teach a simple-minded man how to not be fooled by the educated, Bible-denying scholar. The young man needs knowledge and discretion more today than ever because of all the sin being thrown in his face. If you have discretion, then you have the ability to make the right decision based on the knowledge you already have stored up in your mind. And... Young men today make the worst decisions. Uh, Proverbs 1.5, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain into wise counsel. So a wise man will hear. Most people don't hear because they are too busy doing the talking. When you're talking, you're not learning. You learn from listening. One of Jesus Christ's favorite sayings was, He that hath an ear, let him hear. When in a debate or discussion, with someone listen to what they have to say instead of preparing in your mind what you will reply with you're so busy thinking of your reply that you don't learn any for anything from what they're saying and you can't be corrected by them in the case that you yourself are wrong in the debate because you're so busy trying to disprove what they're saying verse 5 says a wise man will hear and increase learning you need to constantly be learning something every day. You do this through hearing. Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The more you read the book, the more you hear it, the more faith you're going to have. The more preaching you hear, the more you'll learn. The more wisdom you get from hearing or listening to older Christians, the more you'll see a decrease in error in your life. By hearing them talk, you can learn from mistakes they have made so that you won't make the same mistakes. James 1.19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Let another speak. You listen. While in a conversation, let the other one finish talking before you start. If two people are talking, then don't interrupt them talking. Just listen. Listen to what people have to say, and that's how you learn. Proverbs 1, 5 through 6 says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain into wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So continue learning and... Remember wisdom, and you'll eventually understand the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Dark sayings are sayings that are hard to be understood. Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. A lot of educated men are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth 
as it talks about in 2 Timothy 3, 7, because they don't have the fear of God. Romans 3, 18 says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. If you fear God, you will keep from evil. Knowing that if you go against him in his book, then you're in danger of chastisement or punishment or something happening to you. Fear God because he can bring you down to your knees. The reason men don't ever come to the knowledge of the truth is because they don't fear God. Proverbs 1, seven: The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So God lets bad things happen to people every day. God allows natural disasters, plagues, torment, rape, murder, and suffering every day. He can keep you from it, or he can let it come on you. The best you can do is fear God and do what he says in this book. That way, when the bad things do happen, you have somebody to turn to. However, fools despise wisdom and instruction. They hate the Bible because they want to live how they want to live. If they can convince themselves that God isn't real and that we all came from an animal, then they can pretty much live how they want to live. That's why people become atheists. They're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, which is the gospel. Proverbs 1, and 23 says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. These professors, they think they, they know everything, yet they know nothing. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. That's the people of today. It says in Psalms that the fool has said in his heart, There is no God. So, the importance of Proverbs. This book can turn a fool into a wise man. If you will just read the words, believe the words, and then do what the book says. You're going to be a wise man. You're going to be a man of understanding. So, get into the book of Proverbs. Listen to these verse-by-verse -verse studies of the book of Proverbs. And work on your wisdom.